Hi guys, welcome to Code Bashers. Guys, in this video, I will be discussing the important Python interview questions for TCS. This is again a one-shot video. So recently, I have uploaded uh, one-shot videos for important DBMS interview questions as well as important Java interview questions. So you have given a tremendous response on both of these videos, and many of you have requested me to make this Python interview question video also. So here I, I am. So make sure that you are watching this video till the end so that you can get to know the type of the questions which can be asked in the Python interview. Okay. And guys, I know that the interview dates have announced. So make sure that you co comment on this video that when is your interview and for which profile you have the interview. This will give me a better idea on what type of videos to make on this channel. Currently, I am making these inter important interview question videos as well as I have discussed Ninja, Data and Prime Role interview experiences of selected candidates. If you have missed these videos, all these videos are present on my channel. So go now and watch them all after this video. And guys, if you are not confident about your interview, so you can give a mock interview to us. We will take this interview like an actual interview and we will tell you that what, where are the fields you need to focus and how you can improve on your actual interview. So till now we have taken total 228 mock interviews. We have lot of experience in taking mock interviews and we are taking mock interviews for Ninja Digital Prime roles also. So the links you'll find in the description box. Make sure that you book a slot if you're not feeling confident about your actual interview. So guys, now let's start this video and before starting the video, please hit that like button as well as the subscribe button for this channel and do write in the comment section that when is your interview and for which profile it is okay so guys now let's start this video <clears throat> okay so guys the first question is what is the difference between mutable data type and immutable data type in python so mutable data types can be changed after they are created while immutable data types cannot be changed after creation for example i'm just giving you the example let's suppose we have a string str and we are giving it a value known as hello Okay, so if the string will be immutable in Java, in, immutable in Python, so we won't be able to do this like do like this. So str equivalent to hello world. Okay, so once we assign the value, we won't be able to change it. This is known as immutable. But if these strings are mutable, then if the string is given initially as hello, then later inside the code we can uh, change it to let's suppose two, character two or anything else. So this is the difference between mutable and immutable. So immutable data types are those data types which cannot be changed once given the value. Whereas mutable data types are those data types which can be changed after a certain time also inside the code. So I hope this question is clear to you. In Python, the mutable, uh, the immutable data types are uh, tuples. Tuples are, uh, sorry, tuples are immutable, yeah. And lists are mutable. That is tuples cannot be changed once they are initialized, whereas list can be changed once they are, once they are initialized. So I hope this question is clear to you. Moving ahead, what is the difference between set and dictionary? So whenever a difference is asked to you, at least two differences you should give. So what is a set? We all know unordered collections of unique elements. Inside a set, we can have unique elements only. One, two, three we have. If we will again try to insert one, then it won't make any difference to this set. Okay, because one is already present. Whereas dictionary is a collection of key value pair. So this is a dictionary. It will contain a key. It is apple, let's suppose, and it will contain a value, let's suppose five, comma. It is again containing a value, let's suppose orange, and it is again containing a value called six. So these are sets, uh, collections of unique elements. These are dictionaries, a collection of key and value pair. So by this example, you can explain it to the interviewer. Okay. So sets are not in indexed; they are accessed by values. Whereas keys are indexed, they are accessed by keys. So if it is, let's suppose dict equal to this. So if you want to get the value of uh, five, you can do dict, then give the name of the key. And in this, the value will be coming out to be five. Okay. Whereas sets are not indexed, you can simply iterate over the sets to find the value. Okay. So both are mutable. Okay. Both are mutable. Once declared can be changed. So I hope this difference is also clear to you between sets and dictionary. Ne next is again the difference between list and tuple again it is very commonly asked in python interview that what is the difference between list and tuple so list again see list is declared like this 1 comma 2 comma 3 whereas tuples are defined like this 1 comma 2 comma 3 the major difference between both both are that this is mutable as i have told you this is mutable 
because uh, it can be changed once initialized and tuples are immutable once they are initialized they cannot be changed so lists are slower slower than tuples whereas uh, tuples are faster than list okay because see these are fixed values it cannot be changed so this is a faster way of accessing the element whereas list are mutable they can be changed any time so these are a slower way okay slower way they are okay again yeah can be modified cannot be modified because they are immutable in nature and how list are defined i have told you uh, slower and faster and yeah so i hope this thing is clear to you and memory wise also the uh, list contains more mem memory so more memory is consumed by list whereas tuple contains less memory because they are of fixed size so i hope now the difference between list and tuple is also clear to you this is one of the data types moving ahead what is list comprehension so again a very commonly asked question i will give this a five star rating that it's a very important question as per the interview is concerned so list comprehension is a concise way to create list in python it allows you to create a new list by applying an expression to each item in the existing list so if you are given a list so uh, basically list comprehension is to make new list from older lists older iterables you can say based on some conditions let me just explain now with the help of an example okay so if you have a list already existing list 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 okay now you want that this list should be converted i want a new list which only contains the odd number that is 1 3 5 i need to modify this so one such way is to loop over this uh loop over this uh list and then based on the condition make a new list but how we can do the same thing using using <laughs> this list comprehension so x uh, what is the uh, uh, what is the syntax so for i in iterable that is list if uh i mod 2 not equal to 0 so this thing so item i we have given in list list is the name of the iterable if condition so all these things will be done in a single line only and the resultant list will be uh, sorry the result, resultant list will be 1 comma 3 comma 5 which is satisfying this expression so i hope this thing is clear to you what is the list comp comprehension it is a way of making new list from existing list based on some condition Okay, so uh, till now, if you are finding this video useful, please hit that like button as well as subscribe button for this channel and do comment down that when is your TCS interview and what is the date of your TCS interview? Sorry, date and what is the profile of your TCS interview? Like Ninja Digital or Prime? Okay, next moving ahead to the next question, what is lambda functions? So lambda functions, a lambda functions in Python is a small anonymous function defined using the lambda keyword. It allows you to create a function without a formal name. lambda function can have any number of arguments but they can only have one expression so let us again understand with the help of a example now how we define a normal function in python so if we have a function name add okay so add we will pass a comma b here we will do indentation and if we have to return we have to return a plus b if we have to return this is a normal function def okay now coming to that what they are lambda functions so lambda function is similar is that we just do not give the name of the function here we just give the name of the function here on the left side as a variable then we do equal to then we use a keyword called lambda and then we pass the arguments x comma y not in the bracket just x comma y and based on the colons we decide that what this function will return without using the return statement so x plus y we will return it now if we have to like Uh, get addition of two comma three. Then what will we do? We will simply call like normal function two comma three, and it will return us five. So this is how a lambda function is declared based on the lambda keyword, based on the arguments, and then only one expression it can have that is the return type x plus y. We are returning from here. So I hope lambda functions are also clear to you that how what are lambda functions and how we can define them. Moving to the next question, how is exception handling done in Python? so in normal scenarios in normal things we have try we have catch block we have finally block okay this is normally now in python similar pattern is follow we have try block instead of catch block we have a accept block that we are accepting this exception 
then there is a finally block okay so fine what is the use of try block so in try block we give the expression we uh, call the piece of code which can give us the exception in which exception can occur in exception block we are catching that particular exception that if this exception occurs then what we need to do okay in finally block irrespective of the fact whether there is an exception or not whether exception block has catched any exception or not this finally block will run whether exception has occurred or not this is general this block is generally used to close connections for example in try block you have tried to uh, open the database connection open db connection you have tried to open db connection manually now in finally block it will run irrespective of the fact whether there is any exception in the try block or not in finally block what it will do it, uh, we can close the db connection so db dot close we can do like this okay we are closing these connections so finally block is generally used for closing these exceptions so i hope now the exception handling is clear to you in python now moving ahead to next question what are arcs and what are kw arcs so <clears throat> again see if we have defined a function in python okay let's suppose def hello and we know that that we are going to pass a list into this function and that list can contain any value okay list uh, list we will be passing so we can define here okay a and then based on a is a list we will do certain things based on colons so we can like uh, use for loop also for iterating this list okay now we are saying that here we know that we are passing a list and we are here we are iterating the list but let's suppose in this scenario let me just change the color of my font uh, okay so in this scenario see in this my function we are not passing the list we are not passing the list we are just passing the arguments 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 we do not know that how many arguments we will be passing in a function okay then we use this args then we use this args one okay that we do not know that how many arguments we will be passing inside the function here we knew that okay one argument we are passing but here to use star args we don't know that how many number of arguments we are passing in this function so therefore we will uh, pass star args into this function while defining it and then we will iterate over these arguments we will simply iterate over these arguments to print them this is the use of args when we do not know that what are the number of arguments we are sending and the number of uh, and the arguments are in the form of like uh, integers 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 then we can pass it args now coming to kw args again it's similar to uh, args only but instead of numbers 1 2 3 4 we are passing what we are passing we are passing key value pair that name should be ls age should be 30 city should be new york okay so this is how a kw args is done so if we are passing a key value pair then we will use star star kw args if we are simply passing the uh, argument as a number then we can use star args and again inside this also we are iterating over this kw args as a key value pair so key and value are getting printed so this is the major difference between this kw args and args so i hope this question is also clear to you moving ahead explain data types in python so majorly there are four data types list okay list is like this one comma two comma three then this tuple tuple is defined like this one comma two comma three list are mutable tuples are immutable then dictionary also we have seen so dictionary are defined as key comma value pair key comma value pair okay so this is how dictionary defined and set is also we have seen that these are defined as unique values it contains one comma two comma three if you will try to add one also here it won't make any impact to this set whereas if we will try to add one here it will become like this so i hope now this data types in python is also clear to you only tuples are immutable rest all three things are mutable that that is they can be changed by it okay so i hope this question is also clear to you so guys if you are watching this video till here then do hit the like button for this video and subscribe button for this video because it gives us immense motivation for making more such videos and also we are taking mock interviews for the digital ninja and prime profile you can book your slot the links are in the description box okay so now let's continue with the video and do write in the comment section that when is your interview and for which profile you are giving the interview next question is what is the difference between x range and range function so range creates a list of numbers in memory so if we will do like this so range 1 comma 2 will oh, 1 comma 4 we will tell so it will give us a list of 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 so this will it will return as a list here it will return as the list Whereas x range generates number on the fly, saving memory and improving performance. 
okay so x range is used for a um, uh, generates number on the fly thing okay so i will give you the links for both range and x range to study more about the difference but major majorly the difference is this only okay so i hope this question is also clear to you next question is what is slicing in python again a very important concept so let's suppose we have a string string in python known as a uh, code now we want to extract only last three things last two numbers we need to extract so what we'll do we will do the uh, string name is str str equivalent to code it is we need to extract last two characters so what we'll do we will do str then we will do string slicing string slicing i will uh, what we will do we will take we will take the starting index of the uh, character that we want to include so starting index of the character that we want to include is 2 then we will go colon then we will give the ending ending uh, index ending index plus 1 ending index plus 1 what is the ending index here it is 3 3 plus 1 4 so 2 comma 4 once we will give we will get a return of de last two characters de we have returned now this index is inclusive see from this index second index we want our string to start okay but the second index that is the fourth index it is exclusive this is the last index but exclusive of the last index so last index was 3 e index was 3 but we have given last index plus 1 so it is non inclusive so it is inclusive it is non inclusive so this is what a string uh, this is what a slice slicing is this slicing can be applied to list also so if you see my list is 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 and extract the element from index 1 2 3 1 2 3 index we have to include so from 2 uh 3 is exclusive so 2 and 3 we want 2 and 3 we want so starting index we have given 1 and end index is here 2 but we are given 2 plus 1 that is third index so that first and second index can be included so the last index will always remain exclusive so therefore we have done like this now extract the elements from index 0 to 4 exclusive with a step of 2 that is 0 to 4 means 0 to 4 exclusive means that 4 is not included this is not included we want the elements from this index to this index and in a step of 2 that is only 1 and 3 we want so what we'll do starting from 0 fourth is the last index exclusive then we will give we can give a step also in like in for loop we do i plus plus then in this we can do a step also that is in the step of 2 we want so Zeroth index we will get, and second index we will get as a part of this expression. And the variables or uh, and the numbers on this are zeroth index is one, on second index is three. This is our output. So this is our output. I hope this slicing in Python is also clear. To you. Moving ahead to the next question, what is monkey patching in Python? So again, it's a little bit tricky concept. I will try to give the link in the description box, but you can read it on yourself on the Geeks or Geeks or any website. okay i hope this is clear to you next is what is init method in python so it is basically a constructor in python whenever an object is initialized this init method will be called whenever any object of any class will be initialized this the code written in this init method is invoked it will run moving to the na last question of this video of the python important question is that what is the difference between single divide and double divide okay single divide will give us the float expression it is a normal division so what if i told you what is 5 divided by 2 you will say 2.5 so in this to get this float value exact float value we are using this single divide method but in double divide it will give us the floor so 5 double divided by 2 will give us 2 it used to give us 2.5 but it will uh, it will be it would be round off to lower one to the floor of 2.5 what is the floor of 2.5 it is 2 therefore it has got rounded off so double dash is used to give us the floor division whereas the single divide operator is give us, is used to give us the exact division that is 2.5 so i hope these all questions are clear to you and if you have any doubts you can write in the comment section do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe button for this channel because more such videos will be posted on this channel and it gives us lot of motivation for making more such videos if you want to give us mock interviews the links you will find in the description box we have taking ninja digital prime mock interviews the links you will find in the description box and do write in the comment section that when is your interview and which profile you are giving the interview for so that's it for this video thank you for watching this video